Well, I'm going to uh, begin, uh, guys, by asking just about the idea for Coco and where it sort of spawned and what made you want to tell this particular story. Sure. Um, Darla and I both worked on Toy Story 3 together. We had an amazing time. And when that was all over, it was time to start thinking about what was next. And um, I kicked around a few different ideas. And one of them was the idea of setting a story against the Mexican celebration of Dia de Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Um, I had long been interested in the celebration. And frankly, I wanted to learn more about it. And when I started to research and read and start to meet some people to help me learn more about the tradition, um, I, I came to realize what an important uh, part family played in the holiday. And um, this idea of the importance of remembering ancestors and passing their stories along to the next generation. And those just seemed to be really kind of universal ideas. Um, because we knew in the end, even though we were going to tell a story set in this very specific cultural um, uh, environment of Mexico, I, we also wanted to tell a story that people all over the world could relate to and enjoy. Yeah, because I mean, I was, when I was, after I saw the movie, I've become really kind of fascinated by the whole uh, tradition and this whole sort of celebration. And I thought we haven't really got anything in, in, in England or America that kind of is the same sort of thing. I mean, are you, it's kind of a, unfair, isn't it? We haven't got this kind of wonderful celebration. Do, do you wish that we had a a, a, a something quite similar to what the kind of Mexicans are celebrating? Well, it's our hope that people mm -hmm. maybe embrace it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've all been doing that. We've all been putting up ofrendas um, in our homes. And uh, and it's a very it's a very cool uh, tradition and a very intentional moment when you're remembering somebody and what they liked and telling a story about them. So, uh, so hopefully people will adopt their own, either exactly the same way or their own interpretation of it to mm -hmm. remember their ancestors. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very, also, I mean, aesthetically, it's a very vibrant, very kind of colorful celebration, which must give you guys so much kind of um, license, I guess, as, as animators and stuff to, to, to explore, because I mean, the whole thing is so remarkable to look at, I mean, in real life as well. Yeah, I mean, I've got a great production designer, Harley Jessup, and he has an amazing team of artists that he worked with. Um, we had a great time bringing this world to life. We tried to capture what we really saw down in Mexico, um, but we also tried to take the audience on a journey to a place that no one could have even imagined. And uh, we wanted it to reflect what's beautiful about Mexico, and a big part of Mexico is how colorful it is. And so we embraced that kind of full tilt in the movie. And of course, many of the kind of lead characters are skeletons. Now, skeletons, by their very nature, are usually quite scary uh, to sort of look at. So I was wondering about the kind of design of the skeletons in this to make them kind of friendly for, mm -hmm. for audiences of any age. Well, we, we definitely didn't want them to be off-putting or frightening. So we spent a lot of time early on uh, coming up with designs that were friendly and appealing. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. they're skeletons, but they're also people. They're meant to be Miguel's relatives and friends and... So we wanted them to just feel like people while still embracing what's fun about being a skeleton. You know, that maybe your body's falling apart all the time and you have to put yourself back together and all those fun kinds of things. We also made a decision to give the skeletons eyeballs, uh, which I think was pretty critical because I wanted the audience to be able to relate to them emotionally and connect with them. And I, I just couldn't see a way for that to happen if they didn't have eyes. And I was uh, doing an interview with, with Andrew about for Finding Dory. And I, I think Dory was voted the number one Pixar character of all time in a kind of fans poll. And I was wondering if you guys have a favorite character of all time from the kind of Pixar universe. Mm, that is really impossible since they're like, almost, well, for me it is. <laughs> I shouldn't speak for Lee. Uh, I, got, I, I couldn't pick. Uh, could, that would be hard. I yeah. mean, it would be so random. I mean, I love uh, Doug and Up. The dog. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was trying to think, like, if you if we had to get rid of every stuffed animal except for one, a Pixar <laughs> character, like, which is the one you would keep? I better keep Darla from Finding Nemo. Since she's your namesake. Yeah. Oh, was she named after you? Mm, kind of. <laughs> she's honor. a lovely character as Thank well. You. Thank you so much. Um, she loves fish. Yeah. <laughs> I was reading um, in, in Brazil, uh, the film's had to be given a different title. I think it's called Viva, because mm -hmm. in Brazil, Coco means poo. Um, so with that in mind, I was just going to list, say a few names of, of uh, films that have been translated into other uh, languages and just see if you can guess the actual film that it's okay. based on. Okay, here we go. Because <laughs> some of these are really funny. So the, uh, in China, it's Superpower Dare Die Team. Uh, Big Hero 6. Oh. Incredibles. Oh, it's Ghostbusters. Oh, these aren't oh, just Pixar, by the way. Got it. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> Vaseline. That's an Argentinian translation. Vaseline? Mm. <laughs> Greece. Yes. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. All right. He's a ghost. Ghost? Ghost? No. 
Chinese translation for the sixth sense. Uh, He's a good bit of a spoiler. Oh, yeah, total spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mum, I missed the plane. Home Alone? Yeah, that's uh, in France. Good job. Uh, it's raining falafel. <laughs> it's raining falafel. I don't that's know. Uh, cloudy with a chance of meatballs oh, in, in, in Israel. It's wait, raining falafel. I should have thought of that. <laughs> How about the, the teeth from the sea? The tea from the, the sea? The teeth. Oh, teeth? Teeth from the sea, Jaws. Yeah, that's in France. <laughs> My favorite is, uh, his powerful device makes him famous. Toy Story? <laughs> no, that's the Chinese title for Boogie Nights. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely is. Thank you so much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.